Hello and welcome to Journeys and Journals. We're traveling far today from Jackson County, clear over to India and back again. This is my first time to wear a sari on the TV and my guests are here to show other styles and other types of things and tell their story. I'd like you to meet Audrey. Audrey Carter. And mm -hmm. Howard Carter. Audrey and Howard Carter live in Rogue R River. Rogue, Rogue River, but kind of near like, Weimar. Kind of Weimar, Weimar, kind of yes. Yes. Jackson County, rural Jackson County. Mm -hmm. And little little sister? Ellen, my I'm sister. I'm the older sister. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for straightening me out. Ellen, you live where? I live here in Grants Pass. Well, great. Now, we want to know why we are all costumed up today. <laughs> Howard, why don't you start with the story? Well, my parents were missionaries to India. But they, they grew up where? Grew up in Kansas and also in California. And uh, my grandparents, when we came back from India, were living in Weimar. So we are living out in the Weimar area now. Uh, on the, and it was a homestead? Yes, they had about 90 acres out Ooh, there. Ooh, 90 acres of, of rural America. <laughs> That's what right. What was it like? Just all wooded and hills, lots of trees, lots of animals. Were they, they like farmers? Deer. They were farmers and they had a nice farm there. They had about a dozen goats that they had. And what did they do with the goats other than keep the poison oak down? <laughs> <laughs> They'd use the goat's milk. Uh-huh. Was that a, a cash crop that they sold? No, or? I don't think so. There weren't that many people living out in Weimar in those days. Well, what do you remember about Weimar in those days? <laughs> I was only 12 years old when we came back from India. And I just uh, remember the fun we had and I enjoyed going around and my father got out a great big saw and cut down trees so they'd have firewood to burn. Okay, and so you could kind of help out a little. So I went around and helped out where I could. Mm -hmm. Now, Ellen, what do you remember? I have a picture here that just <laughs> really tells a whole lot. Well, when we first came back, coming from India, we didn't see too many trees growing around, and these little pine trees at the top stick straight up like little candles. My brother, used to love to go around and tie knots in those tops of the trees. Oh, I'm with you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> while we were there at Grandpa's place, he had a baby goat, and he gave us a uh, baby goat between my twin sister and me so that we had uh, a baby goat to play with. Well, let's talk about your sister, because she was a Southern Oregon resident for... Yes, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, she taught Bible class, and she, she taught... Uh, she was a very, very... Um, progressive woman. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, I was privileged to sit under her tutorage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, she spoke uh, very clearly and very knowledgeably on any subject. Now this is the two of you and? And the little goat, Eloise and me. And the and goat. You just don't look like twins. <laughs> who we has never the, were. Who Dad, has the glasses? I think we both wore glasses at a time. I don't know both at, whether they're on there or not, but she probably had the glasses first before I did. Now, did you have those in India, or did you just get those? I when got you... these in the States after we came back. Because here's your passport, right? Yes, that's my father's passport. Okay, now, you didn't, in those days, the family was all lumped together? Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were four children? Four of us children. Three of us were born in India. Mm -hmm. My older sister was just about three months old when they left to go to India. Oh, I can well imagine a big <laughs> boat leaving out of where? <laughs> left out of uh, New York. New York, went to London, and uh, from London, then they sailed around down to India, Bombay. Interesting. My family in 1894 went to South America by way of London. <laughs> and then down off of Africa, and then over to Brazil, and then <laughs> down to Argentina <laughs> as missionaries mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. um, what language did your family have to speak in there? 
Well, when I was born, Daddy was taking his final exams in the Tamil language. There are about 400 different languages. <gasps> but Tamil is the, from the south part of India. That's they kind did. of Bombay and such? Mm -hmm. Bombay, I think, was a little more Telugu. Okay. But uh, <laughs> they have several different kinds. Well, you've worn an interesting costume today. Why don't you tell us about it? This is what uh, they wear, the Muslim women. They don't like to show their faces to men. And so when they go out shopping or anywhere, they have this type of a burqa. Oh my goodness. Now so can, all they can do is to see out of these little tiny holes. Can you see me? I can see you. Because the top is like a stretch hat or like a, <laughs> like a swimming cap, doesn't it? And it slides right down? It slides down so that you can have your eyes right where you can see through the netting. Your, your, it's, your burqa is beautifully embroidered, uh -huh. but you kind of pull it together so that you're modestly covered. Is That's that right. And uh, whenever there's no men available around, then they can throw it back and they can visit with their friends. Wonderful. Well, now, would that be worn at home? Around home, if it's the family members like their father or their husband or their brothers, they're allowed to see each other. But outside any strange man, they have to hide their faces. Now, what country are we talking about here? This is Pakistan mainly. Okay. India is mostly Hindus, Pakistani is and so the, the Muslims. This, this is a sari is from India. India. From India. But my friend Shaku Nagpal was um, in Pakistan when the revolution, is that the right word? Yeah. Revo yes. Were you folks there then? No, no. we had left. Okay, so people that were in, in India, left to go to the Muslim section, which was the Pakistan, West, East Pakistan and West Pakistan. And now, they had to leave that. Now your hat is kind of sticking up. Well, does that happen often or, I mean, is there a proper they're, way to? They're different styles. This is the style of this hat to stick up. Ah. And well, then there's times that just come down and all they have is a little kind of a V-shape here with netting. Well, and I, they can throw it I've seen uh, my friends Wear like this, sorry. You have one right here. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing this modeled on you, and uh, we won't do it. it in, we'll just cut that picture in, but it's quite a garment. Kind of reminds me of a choir robe or something, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> this, it? That's the, the dress part, and then this is the hat part. Oh! Oh, we'll tuck the hat Let's part on. Let's see what it is. Oh my, it's more like a cape. Yes, it's like it is here. And then they, the veils come down over the face like this. Oh. Oh. So then you oh. can't see it, but I can see you. You can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then now, you flip now, that up. Sometimes that they'll not have two veils, they'll have one. So then they can flip this back and it lets a little bit more light in. And then sometimes I have seen them with both of them flipped back, but then they have this part that comes over and they cover up their, their nose and their face. It's just the eyes. Some of them, they breathe. Some of them, they show the whole face. So it just depends on how liberated they are. <laughs> right, right. But um, they, this was in Pakistan. This is what I saw most of the time in Pakistan. And most of the time it was black. Now, near the Afghan border, they have this type of um, burqa, and I've seen them in beautiful colors, gorgeous colors, every color of the rainbow. Well, when, but this one was all black. When uh, my friend was bringing this back to me, uh, she said, well, what color do you want? And I said, well, I really like bright blue, and I wanted it to be the kind that was, you know, like a bridal uh, costume. She said, you're a little old for the bright blue. <laughs> <laughs> and that was about 15 years ago, folks. <laughs> oh, my. Well, talk to me more about the wine tiers. And there's a wine tier street here in Grants, Grants Pass. Pass. Yes. Uh -huh. If anyone knows the history of wine tier street, if it's, tell me grandma and grandpa's name. Uh, Other than grandma and grandpa, <laughs> that is. Nephi was grandpa's name. Nephi. Nephi wine tier. Mm -hmm. 
and then many keys. She was keys, and then she married a wine tier. Now, were they living here before they got married? I mean, was this a romance no, in the Rogue Valley, or? No, they were living there after they got married. Came from more where? More or less retired. Came from Kansas, I think. Kansas. Mm -hmm. And so that was a long time ago, mm -hmm. about 19 and 20? I don't know when they got married. <laughs> no, I meant it, that they came north. Did they come by wagon or did they come, did they have a car? What do you know about transportation? I think I they might have so. come by wagon because they didn't have cars too much. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of wagons, what do we have here? <laughs> These that's, are. That's Pakistani wagons. <laughs> okay. This is transportation in Pakistan. Now, that's a <clears throat> bullock cart. Okay, now cart. what would ride in the bullock cart? Most anything. And I've seen a cart like that filled up with steel pipe. I don't see how in the world they could pull it, but they did. They just walked Bullocks right down the street. Bullocks are really in the cow family, is that right? Yes, it's the male cow, I think. And uh, so they just harnessed them up, mm -hmm. kind of like you would a donkey. And, and it has to be somewhat balanced so that they don't have a lot of weight on them, but they, they just part it, let it roll along. Well now, see there's only one wheel so it kind of titters back and forth oh, a little bit. Oh, thanks for pointing that out. Mm -hmm. It sure would. Mm -hmm. Well now this looks like a chariot over there. Why don't you lift that up This here? one? Howard. It's a... Uh, this is the Tonga. It's pulled by a horse. And the man that drives it sits up here. And this is his whip. If he wants to whip it, make it go faster. And uh, the passengers usually ride in the back. But if they want to, they one or two could ride up here. If, if he has a full load, then he'll sit on this bar down here and drive the horse pulling oh the car. Oh my goodness, let's see the back of that. Okay. Is that as luxurious? Oh my, it's even golder. <laughs> oh, classy. How many people have you seen riding on one of those? I've seen families going there and they're, I can't count them all. <laughs> I think about 13. 12 or 13. In, in one little vehicle. Mm -hmm. then in, the, in the summertime, they have something here that goes up here and gets, puts shade over them. So oh, because it's the hot there? Oh, yes. What kind of heat have you seen? Well, 120 degrees for a couple months. And what kind of humidity? Sometimes it's higher than other times. I yeah, mean, I bet. Come, the monsoons come in there and there's a lot of humidity then. Mm -hmm. Well, now your costume. Why don't you tell us about that, Howard? This is a working man's costume. and. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, like a big overgrown shirt and then just the pants. Now, I gather that those pants are loose fitting. Very loose fitting. So could you show me before you tied it up where, where that, just show you in your body how, I think your cord's too, it's yeah, probably I, four feet around or five? Well, it's something like that. Oh, it's elasticized. <laughs> oh my goodness. And the purpose for such a loose garment I think is giving them, make them feel cooler. Sure. Because it's so hot. Just the same like we use a fan mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in your first memories when you came back to visit grandma and grandpa, the wine tears. Well, and people might remember that name. <laughs> See, yeah. grandma and grandpa, they had seven children, six girls and one boy. Okay, so, so I some... had aunts, my mother was one of the girls, so I had an aunt and one uncle. The uncle stayed for a while and then he ran away from home. At what age? I think he was a teenager. Yeah, I, probably a lot of hard he work. Got, uh, he got too many whippings according to my mother's side of it. Uh-oh. <laughs> from his father, not that he did bad, but he was more of a perfectionist. The father or the father. son? Father. Ah. And so he ran off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, when we came back this last time as a family, my uncle was there to meet us on the, uh, San Francisco. San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And first time I'd ever seen him. Reunited. And I family. was kind of scared mm -hmm. of him because of what mother had said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we, we all, all changed. Scared of him. But he, he took a liking to me and he put me up in front uh, between him and his wife and he was taking us from San Francisco to Modesto. And he told me, he said, turn the radio on. I said, huh? Well, in India, we had one place we had to plug it in in order to listen to the radio. 
And so he said, turn it on. He said, and let's, let's get some music. Well, I said, he's not an Adventist. He, I better watch what I'm listening to. <laughs> I was scared to do anything. Finally, he turned it, and I said, oh, he's touched it. I won't touch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now this, who belongs to this? Girls or boys? Boys. It's a boy's cap. There you go. It's probably too small to fit on my head. Oh. I don't know which is yeah, front or back. This is the front. This is the front. Oh, yeah, the fancy part. Mm -hmm. Ooh wee! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that's going to keep you cool, but you sure look regal, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell us stories about what you remember of uh, Jackson County and where did you shop? Did you go to town with Grandma and Grandpa? Or? Well, yes, we went uh, shopping in Medford and also in Grants Pass. And we had cousins that were living in Grants Pass at the time. Na their names? Uh, Ken Lines, I think. What? Ken Lines. Ken Lines, yes, the Ken Lines. Do you know if those are the same Kim Lines that had the brewery? I don't know. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there was a... It's the only time I've heard that mm -hmm. name mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were six girls, so they all had different names, didn't they? So that's only yeah. one batch of the, for one part of the family. No, I don't remember too much about that because we were here for three or four months and then we went north and we settled around uh, near Portland and we went to school up there and we left Grandma and Grandpa down here. Grandma and Grandpa, or Grandma, told me later that when the wine tears left Weimar, they put their place in the hands of a real estate lady and they never got a dime out of it. Oh, she, cheaters never prosper. I don't know who it was given to or anything, but she told me that years later when she, her husband had died and she was alone and she- Destitute, living, living, probably, huh? Living with me, that was before I was married too. Oh, so you kind of took grandma I, in without yeah, for any, a while. Mm -hmm. anything. Well, if you're not comfortable with that hat, I'll sure <laughs> let you move it because it is a, it is something else. It's fancy. I bet those are real gold threads. Like, is your sari sewn with gold and thread? I don't think so. I think it's just imitation, but it's all done by hand. Well, I we know that mine is real hand. gold, and I, mm -hmm. I, it's just incredible. This fine, fine work, and it's yours gorgeous. too is is mm -hmm. down near the hem are these gorgeous flowers. Mm -hmm. um, you hold your shoe up. <laughs> oh, yes. Let's look at your golden slippers. Oh. <laughs> now, they look like something out of Siam to me. Or <laughs> oh. Well, years ago when the Mughals were ru uh, ruling India, they all had their shoes with the curled up toes. And this was not allowed to the peasant people at all. It was only the regal royalty that got to have the toes. So when the moguls were um, out of production, <laughs> why uh, the peasants got to wear them. And so this is why that you see them over there. And they're in all their toes. Now my husband's shoes. Oh my goodness. It's the same type of thing. But you yours are a leather this. shoe. This is all hand done. The um, Pakistanis will sit on their floor and they'll do all this by hand. And it's interesting when you go to wear, uh, to buy a pair of shoes, they don't give you the right foot and the left foot. They just hand you two shoes. So then when you wear them, then you adjust them to your right and your left foot. Oh my. But these, you they're, notice, they're, just they're both the same. They're Okay. They're not the light right and the left. Well, folks, look at the inside, intricate work inside the shoe. Do you have any idea what that says or does? Or? Just I think decoration. it's just a design. They love color. They love shiny stuff. They're um, Well, can you imagine going from India and shiny stuff to Weimar? <laughs> 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 uh, I, I see a picture here of you and... Uh, you had a hobby, as I understand. Your, your big sister tells me that you were on Grandpa and Grandma's place, and you would have been 
just a young fellow. 12 years old. 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And what was your hobby? Well, first, what was the work you were doing? I didn't have any work, but I helped my father when he was cutting down the firewood. Sure, and because your dad would come to mm -hmm. visit and then help grandma and grandpa mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then what did you do? I just wandered around the hillsides where the trees and everything were. Uh, or did mention what Ellen said, didn't she, about the trees? Yes, let's <laughs> I didn't know what else to do, them. so I just tied knots in the trees just for fun. Any of you are out in Weimar and you see a tree that looks like this, you'll okay. just know. I think you have it under there. One of the wine tier grandsons, and this is, this is a great grandson or great great, great grandson? No, grandson. Or great grandson, great great grandson to the wine tears. To the wine tears, mm -hmm. and here enough, here <laughs> he finds a twisted tree. Uh, Ellen, why did you feel it your responsibility to uh, untwist these? Well, I didn't like to deface nature, and I said God made them to go straight. <laughs> <laughs> and so why did turn them all twisted out? They'll point different directions, and they're supposed to point up. Oh, well, I'm with you. I, I like the decorative <laughs> a touch. Uh, I make no claim that this is one that I tied because <laughs> I'm not sure it would tie that bigger hole, bigger circle. Well, years but, and years and years later, mm -hmm. there was a, a man that was on TV with me here. He uh, made spalliards, the wrong word. Anyhow, trees wrapped around to make arches and even a house made out where he would graft the trees together. Mm. Now this is at the time of a funeral. You had your family gathering? Yes, my father, I think, passed away, and this is our family, mother, and all four of us children were yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And was this on Grandpa's place? No, this is in Loma Linda. I think my mother was living in Loma Linda at the time. Well, um, what did Mother tell you stories? about growing up here? I don't remember any stories. <laughs> <laughs> what? No stories? Please tell your grandkids stories, tell folks. The, tell the story of when she learned to drive the car. You better tell it. I can't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. I love to hear of liberated women. Well, I'm not part of the, <laughs> the family in the but growing you, up part. But I remember she was saying that um, the very first car that her father bought, I think was a Ford. And uh, so she didn't know how to drive. And um, the grandmother said, well, I want you to learn to drive so that you can take me into town. And so grandpa went and bought the car and he didn't have much of a, um, uh, any knowledge of how to drive the car. You know, he bought it, but he, you know, the, he was given just little things, you know, about, about the steering and the brake, and that was about it. And uh, so he um, learned how to drive this way. And then he went to teach their mother, you know, how to drive the car. And so she got into the car, and she was driving it. And she was doing pretty good, but when it came time to stop it, she didn't know where the brake was, you know. <laughs> And so he told her, well, and he couldn't find the brake either for some reason. But anyway, he says, well, go into that haystack. And so she, <laughs> went and she drove over to the haystack and got the car stopped. <laughs> Better a haystack than a snowbank, right? <laughs> Ellen, do you have stories about your grandparents you'd like to share? Well, I was remembering something on that. Would, when grandfather went to get the car, he was asked, don't you want the little instructions on how to drive it? And he says, no, no, he says, I've studied the book. <laughs> but he didn't know much about it. And I know one time he was going down the road and he says, how do you stop this car? And he asked my mother. And my mother says, well, you put on the brake. And he says, well, I don't know where the brake is. And so he was going, he says, we're going too fast. We're going too fast, 15 miles an hour. He was oh. going too fast. And he said, well, how am I going to stop it? I don't want to go any farther. I want it to stop. So he ran into a bush on the side of the road to stop it. But then after that, he took some lessons and he learned how. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. 
Well, happy memories are stories that you love about grandma and grandpa and, mm -hmm. and their pioneering spirit down here in Southern Oregon. Mm -hmm. They must have passed it on to your family because <laughs> you guys, how long have you been in mission service? Where all have you been? Well, we were in Pakistan only two years and that's the only foreign mission service that we specifically went to. We were in service in the States for 40 years in uh, education. Ah, uh, teaching what? Teaching from California to Oregon. <laughs> and what was this course that you taught? Mostly I taught grades one to eight or one to, one to 10. That, uh, that was, in a one room school? Uh, no, it was, uh, I was the principal. My wife taught music and taught one of the grades sometimes. And now, do you play Indian music? Do you have instruments from India? Oh, we should have brought the sitar. Yes, we have a sitar. <laughs> and you I play it? I haven't learned to play it. No, I got the music book. <laughs> and that's as far as it went. <laughs> like Grandpa, you know, with the car book. That's right. <laughs> he read the book. Now, my grandmother was telling me when she was going to school, they had the inkwells. And she wore wrong bra braids. And the girl sitting behind her would stick her braid into the inkwell and to tease her back and forth. And she, she told me when she was quite old, she says, I'll never forget her. No. <laughs> uh, we used to have a protractor. Do you remember it made a yes, circle? Mm -hmm. Well, one girl, Dolor Doris, Doris May Robinson, I think, she had long braids and they'd tie them together and put the protractor between them. Oh, meanness. <laughs> What's this for? That, that's to attract a company. Or okay. attract people to your what you're gonna do. No, oh, to the monkey. Just do to yeah, the monkey for, it's for the monkey. Yeah. Oh for oh there I made it sound. Well we are just about out of time, but I wanna thank you all for coming. Oh, oh you have to know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming all this way from India and Pakistan and Jackson County mm -hmm. to be our guest. We miss your Weimar Bridge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we spent many an hour over there visiting. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Bernie Martin Beck traveling to the Far East this time. It's been fun. Welcome. Welcome to our show. Mm -hmm.